Hello my friends, in this video we'll be exploring the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype traits and uh, even ethnicity results of an Iron Age Celt from Wales right here in this region of Wales. So let's dive into his result. First we're going to start with his Y-DNA. He is a man and he has a Y-DNA lineage which is L51. Uh, this is the most common subclade of R1B. R1B is this um, Y-DNA that's very common in Western Europe. Actually let me look, uh, show you where it is found most frequently. Uh, R1B is a very common Western European lineage. It is very typical for uh, Ireland, Wales, and the West of Europe in general. Even in Spain, it is very common. It is associated with Indo-Europeans. Indo-Europeans brought this lineage into Western Europe, and it became by far the most predominant Western European lineage. So when it comes to his ethnic calculator results, let's look at that. He is actually closest to Spanish followed by Bulgarians, followed by global around for a culture, Belbikers, and Belbikers from Britain. And British people actually come in seventh place, which is very, actually sixth place, which is really uh, weird, <laughs> kind of interesting that that's what he scores with my ethnicity calculator. Of course, he scores different stuff with G25. And I'm going to show you what he scores with G25. Now, with G25, he is closest to Arcadians and Welsh and Scottish, all the usual suspects when it comes to Celtic admixture in Europe. Uh, he's definitely very insular Celtic and uh, very similar to modern inhabitants of modern Celtic inhabitants of the British Isles. If we try to model him as a mixture of multiple populations, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Arcadian, Icelandic, a little bit Basque, a little bit Lithuanian. So there is um, there is some Eastern shift in his results. There is a little bit of a Germanic or a Caucasian, which is uh, in the same direction, in the Eastern direction. There is a little bit of an Eastern direction shift in his result. Let's see how much that is if we reduce that to three populations. And we see, yeah, there is some Eastern European result shift in his in his DNA. So he's scoring 8% Lithuanian here, for example. Um, does that mean he is part Germanic? I would say no, not really. Maybe it is something archaic. It is archaic and Indo-European um, drift that um, in modern insular Celts don't have but insular Celts in the Iron Age did have. So I wouldn't say this is due to necessarily due to Germanic admixture uh, because he doesn't seem to be scoring any Germanic groups in the model, in the Oracle. Uh, let's go ahead and explore his national quarter results, what he looks like. And in terms of what he looks like, he's actually very dark. Uh, he definitely has brown eyes, brown or hazel eye color. All of the, for example, blue eyes, there is pretty much no likelihood of that, only 0.009% chance of blue eyes. So Definitely does not have blue eyes. His eye color is most likely brown or hazel, which is definitely darker than what's typical for, you know, Welsh people today. In terms of his hair color, also very dark, dark brown hair, 84% likelihood of dark brown hair. The second largest group for hair color that he scores is black hair. And even light brown hair for him is just so uh, unreasonable. It is just so unlikely. It's only 1% likelihood of that. For skin color, it looks like he's got white or olive skin tone. Once again, that is uh, quite a lot darker than what's typical for Welsh people today. Uh, Welsh people nowadays tend to have white or palest skin, but in his case, he is scoring 52% likelihood of white skin and 45% likelihood of olive skin. For hair texture, it looks like he's got wavy hair, although curly and straight hair is also quite possible. Kinky hair is out of the picture, uh, so his hair texture is most likely curly, wavy, or straight. And he does not have blue eye haplotype 3, no blue eye haplotype 2. It looks like he does have blue eye haplotype 1 just based on his genotype here. We can assume he does. And he does not have blue eye haplotype 4. Okay, quite interesting. Uh, he also has two light color variants in all of the variations of SLC45A2 that are associated with like pigmentation, pigmentation of eyes, hair, and skin. And he also has two light color variants in this variation of SLC24A5, which is implicated in, uh, once again, the same thing, but mostly skin color. All right, um, what about the phenotype oracle? Let's see the oracle. So with the oracle, the closest mo the closest phenotype, I guess, to him is this, uh, which is sort of a Western European or uh, kind of Ryan Gosling, but darker version of Ryan Gosling type of phenotype. The second closest phenotype to him is this, which is Volgid. And the third phen closest phenotype for him is this, which is Alpinid. And for the models, uh, let's see, let's look at the models a little bit more. The models definitely look very interesting, but it looks like he's getting modeled as a mixture of uh, mostly a darker version of corded plus a uh, a darker version of like Mediterranean or or East Mediterranean phenotypes. 
that's the general trend we can observe here. So with the two-way, with the twelve-way oracle, he's scoring five, eight percent, eight percent this plus thirty-three percent this, which is kind of like a version of corded corded phenotype, but with darker eye color. Uh, sixteen percent this, eight percent this, eight percent this, which is like a Mediterranean or Eastern Mediterranean phenotype. Eight percent this, which is an Albanian phenotype, and sixteen percent this. So if you merge all that together, you would get something that looks that resembles him. All of these are quite dark in color, except for maybe the last phenotype. So uh, he's definitely a lot darker than what's typical for modern Welsh people. I said that I said that previously, but I will say it again. All right. When it comes to his um, biomarkers, let's look at that. What his genetic predispositions are. It looks like he's got a genetic predisposition to higher levels of vitamin D, which is definitely really good. Higher levels of LDL cholesterol, which is not good at all. Uh, lower levels of HDL cholesterol, which is also not very good, but it's still sort of within the healthy range. Uh, as long as he washes out for his diet, he would be fine. For glucose, he's got an above average level of glucose as well, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, slightly above average level of hemoglobin, which is okay. Um, average blood pressure, once again, pretty okay. And slightly, actually significantly above average level of iron in blood. I wonder why he scores that. I feel like that might have to do with his score for hemochromatosis. Let's go ahead and see what he scores for hemochromatosis, actually. Okay, so for hemochromatosis, he's got AA in um, cis 2 tier, which means he has two variants for, of the c 282 y hemochromatosis mutation and likely has hemochromatosis. This is also the most important variation for hemochromatosis risk. So that is, that is huge. So he actually has hemochromatosis, which is colloquially known as the Celtic curse. Let me show you what that is. Uh, hold on. If you look up Celtic curse, that shows up. Yeah, hereditary hemochromatosis. Look at that. It shows up. So he's he's got this genotype which predisposes him to hemochromatosis, and he actually is also a Celt. Definitely very interesting here. All right. Uh, what about his polygenic risk scores? Let's look at that. So it looks like he's got a below average risk for stroke. It looks like he's got an above average risk for male pattern hair loss. But that's typical for Europeans. It looks like he's got an above average risk for atrial fibrillation, uh, below average risk for DVT, which is really good, a average risk for bipolar type 1, average risk for schizophrenia, uh, definitely very high risk score for type 2 diabetes, and very low risk score for Alzheimer's. So what he really needs to look out for is type 2 diabetes, hemochromatosis, and uh, male pattern hair loss, I guess. But that's male pattern hair loss, that's kind of typical for Europeans to score this much. Uh, it looks like he's got below average level um, odds for multiple sclerosis. A one risk variant for breast cancer at 12, which is pretty good. Six risk variants for testicular cancer at 16, which is also pretty good. A one risk variant for celiac disease out of 8, which is pretty typical. No, no risk variants for GSS. Three risk variants for Crohn's out of 22, which is pretty typical. No risk variants for Raffensteins. And two risk variants for Parkinson's out of 18, which is once again pretty typical. So uh, actually, I would like to see what he scores for the blood type. Hold on, let's let's see the blood type. All right, so his blood type is type O. That that is the most common blood type among um, all humans, aside from I think like Eskimos. Yeah, so all humans aside from Eskimos tend to have blood type O, and he falls into that bracket. And now let's see, is there anything else that I need to show? I think I've shown you everything. Well, hold on, let's let's look at the result, and see if I find anything that's maybe catches my eye. Because the hemochromatosis thing is crazy. Yeah, it's super crazy. So he actually most likely has hemochromatosis. Um, is there anything that catches my eye? No micropenis. That's really good to see. Better performing muscles like your sprinter rather than endurance athlete. Two variants for increased pain sensitivity in SCN9A. And he does not have any East Asian variants in EDAR. All right. Yeah, okay. I mean, I, I guess I don't, I don't really want to talk about any of, any of this stuff here. He's got one protective variant from AIDS, in this, from HIV in this variation, which is really good. And he, it leads to a 60% reduction in HIV viral load. Definitely very good to see that here. All right. I guess that's pretty much all I wanted to show you. Thanks for watching my video until the end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And by the way, um, you can download this file in 23andMe format from link, which is in the description of the video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.